to Washington now, where the trillion-dollar infrastructure bill awaits President Biden's signature. The House passed the measure Friday night with 13 Republicans supporting it and six Democrats voting against it. And while some on the Hill praise it as a major victory for the Biden administration, negotiations continue within the Democratic Party over the president's massive social spending plan. Laura Podesta has the latest. Laura, good morning. Hey, good morning, Anna Marie. So it's one down, one to go for the Biden administration. The focus now is on the nearly $2 trillion Build Back Better bill. And as a reminder, that covers everything from climate change initiatives to child care to health care. And it would be paid for largely by raising taxes on the wealthy. The motion is adopted. Congress passed an infrastructure bill with a bipartisan vote late Friday night. Infrastructure week. President Biden expects to have shovels in the ground in two to three months. And for all of you at home who feel left behind and forgotten in an economy that's changing so rapidly, this bill is for you. The vast majority of the thousands of jobs that will be created don't require a college degree. There'll be jobs in every part of the country. The bill provides money for roads, highways, and rail lines. It also funds expanding broadband internet access, replacing unsafe lead pipes, and providing charging stations for electric vehicles. We've got to implement it right, and then we have to go out and sell our success. Lawmakers now turn their full attention to the president's Build Back Better agenda. The current version includes money for climate change, universal pre-K, and prescription drug reform. Senator Tim Kaine says Democrats need to deliver in hopes of avoiding the same election losses they suffered last week, most notably in Virginia. We should have passed these bills in early October. If we had, it would have helped Terry McAuliffe probably win the governor's race. No Republicans have come out in support of the plan, often arguing it's government overreach. We're going to do everything we can to stop it dead in its tracks. Democrats hope to pass the bill by Thanksgiving. Back to the infrastructure bill. On Wednesday, President Biden goes to Baltimore to talk about how this bipartisan deal will upgrade our nation's ports and strengthen supply chains to prevent disruptions. Anne-Marie. So any idea when President Biden will be signing that infrastructure bill into law? Uh, the White House has not said. They've said only that a formal signing ceremony would be soon. And I think, Henry, it comes down to scheduling because Biden did say that he wants, quote, the people who work so hard to get this done, the Democrats and Republicans, to be here when we sign it. So he clearly wants that photo op to have the Republicans and the Democrats he behind does. him. Uh, and, and that just wasn't possible over the weekend and perhaps it won't be possible even this week because Congress is not in session this week. Oh, um, so, you know, you mentioned that the president said the infrastructure bill was going to create thousands of jobs across the country. Do we know what that might look like? Most of these jobs are going to be in the construction industry. The exact amount of jobs created this year is not known, but it's estimated to be about one million jobs over a five year period. And clearly this bill will help not only those people get a paycheck, but indirectly, if you drive to work, if you uh, need Internet access, the bill is going to help in that regard, too, because roads are going to be get repaved. Bridges will be secured and broadband access will be broader, so to speak. <laughs> Always good. Um, so before I let you go, I've got to ask you about the social spending package. What happened there? Because there was, you know, for a while, progressive Democrats said there was no way they were going to vote on the infrastructure bill unless it was paired with the social spending package. So why didn't the social spending package get a vote? Yeah, unfortunately, they weren't able to bring both across the finish line on Friday. And the reason for that is because there are some moderate House members, moderate Democrats mostly, who are concerned about the nearly $2 trillion bill, uh, the cost of it. And they've made it clear that they're, they're not going to vote for it until they can see a preliminary budget review from the Congressional Budget Office. That estimate, though, from the CBO is expected to take about two weeks to complete, Anne-Marie. Ah, Laura Podesta in New York, Laura, Thanks. thank you so much.